So we've been talking about multi-phase flow, specifically black oil model. Uh, we wrote the equations. We derived the sort of physics equations, conservation of mass for oil, gas, water. Then we looked at the buckley levitt problem as a verification problem for the code we're going to anticipate that we're going to write. Right? Now, we're not actually, I'm not actually going to ask you to write a multi-phase simulator in this class. If you take a graduate class in reservoir simulation, you'd probably do that. Although, as you'll see, it's not that much harder. You know, it's just sort of one additional equation with, with some subtleties. Okay? So, but we are going to now develop the discrete equations so you get to see what they look like, and you'll see that the structure is very similar to what you, what you know. So we'll, with, with that in mind of where we're going to develop the gre discrete system that we can solve for multi-phase flow, we're going to start with um, modifying the equations that we wrote down, and we're going to make some assumptions. So we're going to go to two-phase, because the extension of three-phase is not that difficult. So we're going to stick with two phases, oil and water. Okay, And we'll also assume no capillary pressure. So the pressure in the oil and water will be identical. And so if we write those two equations, again, these are just, we've already derived them. So this is the mass balance for the oil. So this is for the oil. And you notice there's no subscript on the P because it's the same as the water pressure. So we'll write the mass balance for water. for the water. Now we're going to start to manipulate these and we'll, we'll just look at the oil equation uh, because the manipulations are the same for the water equation. But the first thing we'll do is we're going to expand the time derivative uh, on this first term using the product rule. So do this first term is that guy that's equal to that guy. So then we're going to use, so this is just a, the product rule. Then we're going to use the chain rule um, on the other term. So understanding that, uh, understanding in the second term there that both BO, the formation volume factor of oil, and the porosity are functions of pressure, right, and time. So then we'll use the chain rule. Again, that comes because both phi is, is a function of pressure and time, as is BW, BO, or, or if you want to say 1 over BO, is a function of pressure and time. Right, so we just use the chain rule. Right? So d phi dt is d, P, d phi dp dp dt right, via the chain rule. The derivative of the 
In the first term? On, 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 the, on the third line. Yeah, right here. Yeah. That's just. Uh, I don't see the problem. That, that, that's oh, wait, 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 wait. This shouldn't be here. Feel better now? Yeah. This is the product rule. I just said, yeah. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Okay, then, so then the chain rule on these two terms, so that, that we pull this dpdt out, but it would, it, it would be multiplying both of those terms. <coughs> and then, using the definition that the compressibility of oil is B0 P1 over BO, and the compressibility of the rock is 1 over phi dP dP. Then we can do one of these tricks where we, where we sort of multiply by 1, right? So if we, <coughs> if we multiply by the whole equation by 1, which is in this term, our 1 is going to be BO over BO, right? Then you can see that this guy here is equal to the compressibility of oil. And likewise, we'll multiply by phi over phi here, 1. And then we have that <coughs> this guy is equal to the compressibility of the rock. Then the equation becomes That guy, so this is for oil. So we can make those same, uh, basically, mo modifications along with the definition that the compressibility of the water is BW dP 1 over BW. And we'll spare all the details doing the same operations again. And we'll just write down the final equation for water. Water equation. So then we're going to multiply the oil equation by BO over BW. So we can do that to all the terms. And then we're going to 
to add it to the water equation so that we have an overall mass balance. Right? So if we only have two species, oil and water, if I add them, and both of those equations conserve mass, if I add them together, then that's going to be conservation of mass of the mixture, of the total mixture, right? So doing that, I get I'm just going to say there's some steps here. And I'm going to pull out phi BW because it, sh it shows up in all the terms. So then I have SO, CO, plus SW. that. <coughs> so that's the overall mass balance. Now let's look at this term. Everybody be okay if I wrote this as partial partial T SO plus SW? Is that okay? What is SO plus SW? What's it equal? One. Equals one. What's the time rate of change of one? Also, here we have another one. Right? So we're actually going to define this as phi over BW times the total compressibility. Right? So where the total compressibility is <coughs> SO, CO, SW, CW, plus CR. Is also used that. So then finally we have the overall mass balance.
the overall mass balance looks like that. Do what? So that's the overall mass balance. Now, <clears throat> it looks like we got rid of all the saturations. Now we started with an equation that had saturation and pressure in. Now we have an equation that appears to just have pressure in it. Did we completely get rid of the saturation? Where are they? Yep, they're in the relative permeabilities. So it's still a function of saturation through the relative permeability. But when it's written like that, it sort of looks like it's only a function of pressure. So this is often called the pressure equation. I kind of prefer overall mass balance so that you don't forget that it's still a function of the saturations. Mm -hmm. But often in literature and books and other places, you'll see this called the pressure equation. 